And I now where do I hit pause? Well, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's Thursday Live. I'm Denise Arminio. We have Claire McIntyre here with us helping. And um, today we are going to work on um, our guts and intestinal health. And um, I am actually going to be the volunteer today to help work on some of that stuff. And I think we also have a special guest um oops gosh where'd you go i lost you there for a minute um joining us today i hope um i'll let that remain a secret until that person shows up so i don't give anything away um so with that said um if you have any questions please put them in the chat and claire is going to help answer them and I'm going to get started. Does any, any questions, anyone, before I get started? So I already have my um, information loaded in this uh, on the user record. So I'm just going to hit next. And I'm just going to put gut issues here. And down at the bottom, you can just hit that purple button that says begin and okay. And now this brings you to the voice um, part where I leave a sample of my voice. Um, before I start, can anybody just wave their hand? Is anybody new or on a trial using the Genius right now? I recognize most of these names, so. I think you all have, um, I think you all have the trial. I mean, I'm sorry, I think you all already have the genius. So anyway, with that, I am just going to leave my voice sample right now. I'm gonna hit the record button right here in the center and I'm gonna say my name and then repeat the vowels. Denise. Armenio, A E I O U, A E I O U, A E. So now, once that's finished, we can go down to the bottom left and it says voice harmonics. And it's good that you always try to press this. It's what it is, is it's actually the genius has translated what I just recorded or what you will record into the frequency. So it kind of works as like a homeopathic. Um, you can turn your volume up. It's a little bit hard to hear. I'm turning mine up so maybe you could hear it. And I'm just going to hit. Um, or touch where it says voice harmonics. Did everybody hear that? And can is the volume on me okay, Claire? Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to hit next to the bottom right. Okay, there's just one question coming through from Karen. So she's saying that she's new and you've had your genius for a couple of years, wasn't able to use it the last three years. Okay, um, we can help you with that later. Um, um, just wasn't able to get the, um, we can send you some links to help you. That's more of a, a support question here. Um, but thank you for leaving that question. Um, okay, so I'm going to hit next. What? Can can you just make Connie co-host, please? Oh, yes, sure. Thank you. There you go, Connie. 
Um, okay. So now I'm just going to hit continue. And I am going to take a picture of myself. So this is, I'm going, you um, touch or click on this image of this person here. And it gives you the option to take a picture or use existing photos. So I'm going to take a picture. And this is me. So now I'm just going to hit camera. And there we are. And isn't that fun? So now I'm going to hit begin analysis on that. And we can hit continue. Okay, so first I'm going to leave an affirmation and I am going to say I, whoops, I am filled with pure love and light and all energies transmute to love. Okay. And I'm going to hit OK here. And now I'm going to go to if I can move this zoom control bar out of the way, the back office. And the way you do that is you hit these three um, lines up top and I'm going to go to libraries and I'm going to add to client. So I'm gonna, I hit, I selected add to client and now select all and I'm hitting okay. And then I'm also going to go to master branch because I have libraries in here as well. And I'm gonna, um, right now it's in created. So I'm gonna hit add to client and select and then okay. And I'm also gonna touch on the tab that says shared and hit add to client, select all and hit okay. So now when we go back, you can see that this tab for library. So now it shows the four um, headings, bio, field, body, libraries, and mind. Right now they're alphabetized here, but as soon as I run the analysis by hitting begin analysis down below, the genius will prioritize in order of where it sees the most energetic disturbances. So um, that's always, um, if you don't know where to um, go, that's a good place to go. Um, okay, my special guest is here today, but I'm not sure what's going to happen because um, Deb, it's telling me to, I can't make you co-host. I can only make you host. I signed in as a host too. So whatever you want me to do, I'll just sit quietly and uh, yeah, I'll just, I, I, I'm not going to put you. I, I'll just I, talk I'll, on this microphone and we'll be fine. I think. Okay. I'll just so change the name there to mount my own name. Sorry. Okay, so everybody, this is Dr. Debbie Drake, and she's here. She's going to help me a little bit um, because we're going to work with some parasites when we work on um, my gut, and she could help give a little better explanation of the different parasites than I can because I'm not as I'm not trained medically trained in that. So, luckily, the genius knows all the names. We don't That's have right. to. I don't need to know them, and you don't need to know them. But it is nice to get a little understanding of what they are so yeah if you learn a few clusters you learn everything so i'm going to just show you the clusters okay so we're gonna... it matches our it matches our other training on bioterrain right. the yellow right. zones tend to hold molds the red zones tend to hold worms and and yeast and the blue zones tend to hold bacteria of a more serious nature just as a rule okay but I'm going to start with the analysis part. So I'm going to hit begin analysis. Okay. okay. So um, you can see that body is showing up on top. And I'm actually pretty surprised because I don't have that many reds or blues. I'm happy <laughs> about that. Um, and then it goes to libraries, then mind, and then the biofield. So just to give a little explanation for those of you that are new, 
Um, the genius um, uses a numerical system. The numbers range from zero to 777. The range between zero and 100 is represented by the color blue. So you could see that here with neurotransmitters. The number there is 82. And it is observed that um, items that fall in this range are chronic energetic disturbances, meaning you've had them for a longer period of time. Um, in Chinese medicine, they also refer to this as stagnant energy. It can also be referred to as under energy. So maybe it's not getting energy. What it does not do, it is not um, diagnostic in the allopathic sense. It is not telling you if you have a deficiency in something or an excess or too much of something. Um, this is just showing you energetically what is showing up. So don't, you can't take this, whatever you get here and, and take it to your doctor and say, this is what someone told me. Um, okay, so after the range from zero to 100, the next range is 101 to 450, and that is represented by the color green. From there we go 451 to about 688, and that's represented by the color yellow. And then the red range is represented from the, um, in the range from 689 to 777. And that would be more your acute energetic disturbances. So it, they're happening now, maybe um, you ate a lot of something, so it might throw off and maybe your dairy is out of balance or maybe you're around um, someone in your household who is very grumpy and angry. And so maybe the, emotion of anger shows up, even though that you're not really feeling anger right now. But it is in your energy field. So you do want to work with that and clear it as well. Um, the reds can also indicate heat and inflammation. And again, um, like the opposite of the blue, it, um, it can represent an over energy. And we see that a lot in meridians. We work with over energy and under energy a lot. So um, the other thing that we can see here is on the right, I mean, on the left-hand side next to like brain anatomy and emotional, we see like this accordion or these arrows. That's just telling us that there's more information when we click on the line. So in other words, if I click on this line for brain anatomy, you're going to see different areas of the brain and then where they fall in this, this numerical um, value system that the genius uses. Before just I as we're, can I just say that just as we're talking about the gut, when you go back to the brain anatomy, the most gluten sensitive gut is very aligned with the gluten sensitive cerebellum. So if you're looking for clues that somebody has food poisoning in their gut, the gluten in their cerebellum may be on fire from the gluten antibodies looking for the gluten in the salmonella attacking the gluten in your gut and your blood and your cerebellum. So um, you may notice that people who have particular gut problems, they have low zinc because the parasites stole them. They have on fire gluten antibodies to their cerebellum and thyroid. So I was just uh, very interested to see how you've progressed already, my dear. Okay. This, well. This is very, this is improving as you speak. <laughs> so and just to give everybody like just a little back history here, um, Debbie and I worked together yesterday. So she had a little pre-glimpse of what my <laughs> gut um, looked like. And we did a little bit of work on it yesterday. So um, we could, if we have time, we could always show you a little bit of what came up yesterday first after clearing and then what it looks like yeah. today. If we can, I, can I just make one more comment? The, the red zones are also a cluster of other things. So at least something within that cluster of 12 or 20 items is red. That's why you can't say that it's diagnostic in one measurement alone. It's telling you that that cluster of frequencies, there's a cluster of them that are similar. When you look on the submenu, now you're going to see which is the truer red zone, the one that's over outside the bell curve at the three standard deviations from the mean is more significant at the very bottom and the very top. When you're always in the middle, you know, your body's pretty average. So this computer is helping us spot the really areas that are got a, one measurement or so within that cluster 
that's out of whack. Okay, so now I'm going to get my aura picture. So before we start doing anything, so I'm going to go down to in the bio field, you see aura, and you notice that there's no arrow there. So there's not like a panel beneath it. But when you click the line, it does allow you to, to get um, your aura picture. So at the bottom, you see begin analysis, you just want to hit that. And well, you know, it's okay. It's not like the greatest looking aura, in my opinion, because it's kind of like really muddy on the sides in here, this gray and pale, but hopefully we'll bring some more color in here. May, as... may I suggest that the red shocker should be at the bottom and the purple shocker should be at the top. So it looks like you've inverted your polarity. That usually means that you don't have enough minerals at the base anymore. So I, I would like to bring your attention to the zinc that holds the base root of the triangle. And that's a good reason to maybe preload zinc into your, into your recipe as you're coming along. Okay, well, we're going to add all the minerals. So do you mean you want to see just zinc go in? No, well, I'm just giving you the hint that when you're going to minerals next, let's see what your zinc level oh, looks yeah. like. Oh, that, yeah. Well, that's, what we, that's where we were headed next. So what, what I'm going to do next is show you how we're going to, um, teach all of you to like prime your body to get it ready for um, the scan. So it will help your body with um, the minerals and a lot of the different um, sections on the bio field, just get your body in as best condition as possible to receive all these other frequencies that we're going to be taken in. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to add all of these frequencies to the quick zap tray and we will run that first. So I guess since we're here in the bio field, I can start here. I'm just gonna th add aura up top um, and then we can work with the chakras. Now the chakra was red, it's not, we're not seeing any red in here, but I'm just gonna add them all. So I'm gonna hit um, all yellow, green, that's the fastest way to restore the polarity of north to south because the chakras are going to work wide and narrower up towards the top making positive top negative bottom so that's a really great place to start but i'm going to add them all in We're yeah why not cake mix Op here. open the flow baby <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just going to add all the nogiers here we're not going to be um discriminant we're just going to add them all Spiritual protection, a very, very, in my opinion, one of the most important panels um, that you always want to work with. Um, meridians. Um, I'm going to just add the governing and um, conception. But since the conception is off, I'm also going to add the first point, which is CV1, if I can find it, and CV24, which is the last point, because a lot of times when you stimulate those two points, it gets the whole um, meridian running. Um, and I'm kind of feeling like I should add these blue. Ne never, never ignore a blue zone. It's crying for your yeah. attention. And um, I'm going to add the pericardian. And liver. Always add the liver. If it's anywhere near, it's the cleaning agent of the whole body. So um, we have, we've added those. Then sacred geometry. Again, I'm just going to add all of these. Which creates that beautiful vesicle, the vessel that you're pouring the rest of your session into a cup. So now we're making the cup on its axle with a good rim around the cup and a good physical, emotional space with a spiritual protection around it. So now it's much easier for your body to be safe enough to receive new signals. Okay. And now I'm just adding all the Saveggio tones. So now the next thing I'm going to go grab is I am going to grab um, from brain EEG. I'm going to add the theta waves just to make my brain a little bit more receptive to receiving 
um, these frequencies. And then we're going to go into minerals. Dun, dun, dun. And oh. oh, the zinc isn't red anymore. Yay. So you're improved already overnight. <laughs> So, but look at the three M's. Remember, I told you that if you have gut dysbiosis, it steals the magnesium, manganese, molybdenum, the iron, and selenium. So that's usually the food of yeast infections or some other infection. Um, so when you're missing those main communicators that make left and right brain talk back and forth and make thyroid thermostat and make the spleen clean you, it's hard to get over the hump of detoxing somebody if they don't have those cleaning minerals, okay? So I figure, why, why worry? Why have your cake go flat? Just put all the right minerals, even if you put them all in there, the body can always use that nutrition. It's never going to harm you, really. Okay. I'm also going into spinal energy because I want to make sure that the brainstem is talking and sending all the accurate signals to all the different parts of the body because that's really important that we're receiving all those signals. So I'm just going to add all of them. Whoops, hold on. So folks, you're opening up the grid. You're opening up the human matrix. You're opening up the most positive receiving vessel. And because you're already picking what the person's craving, you're already giving them exactly the soup they want. So their body's gonna slurp it up really quickly. So you only need to use a few minutes of this as a primer and their body will get the instantaneous signal. Oh, take on this good shape now. So I'm gonna run this for three minutes. And if you have anything that you wanna talk, or I can try one minute. Let's try one minute. Well, let's just show them how much it improves in one minute if you just put in the right building blocks to build the table with all the, the, the right structural elements. And the spiritual protection and the alignment, this is what we talk about bioterrain. The pumping, the pH balance, and the minerals depend on that scaffolding. So you're just starting your whole construction today with a good scaffolding. Yep. So here we go. One minute. <laughs> well, also, what I'm also going to show you um, after we do this primer here for our body is we can also go into digestion in body systems and then into entangled insights and show you how we can work with entangled insights to work on your gut that's what's great about the genius you can go wide no. angle lens or you can go deep on the zoom lens right right but before before we do that we have to go into general overview yeah Remember, no matter how much education you have, the person's own brain is a better doctor than you'll ever be. So if you just use the true signals coming off their voice print, even if you don't understand them or believe them, then you have to realize that's what they're reflecting to themselves at this time. And so go by, go by their high zones. But I, I've been trying to teach Denise, sometimes just giving them the, the batter to make their cupcake first is going to make it a lot easier a session on you and on them and they'll get better results okay and then they'll hold it longer so they'll believe in you and be compliant with you and come back to you because you actually budge them somewhere forward you know some many people go forward and they fall right back and that's so I usually 30 percent. i don't mean to interrupt you but <laughs> we have to keep going um i had 30 percent rectification here so that's decent it's not bad i mean in one so minute I'm going to close this view now, and now I'm going to go back to the front end, and I'm going to hit system overview or touch on system overview, to, and that will bring us to general overview, and general overview is an expanded version of the system overview. It includes everything that you're looking at and all the, the panels underneath, except that now in this view, it's reordered in numerical value so it's all everything is all will be all mixed and you'll get to see just going to run this analysis you'll get to see what your high highs and your low lows are so for me we see um, a bunch of different points on my meridians 
that are red, um, manganese, again, some more meridians, C5. Now we can just look quick, just for curiosity's sake, just for, um, C5 has to do with the vocal cords, tonsillitis and persistent cough. Uh, cough. However, the emotional connection really resonates with me. And that's too many things on one's plate. <laughs> <laughs> so my vocal cords are fine. But um, okay, so now if we hit general overview again, you can see the bottom view. And again, we're seeing a lot of meridians in here. Um, we also see the large intestine for digestion, um, willow, and then some hormones. So what I'm going to do a little differently today, instead of running a quick zap, I'm going to add the reds and the blues to the main hold tray. And I'm going to run a quick balance here to see if we can I'm just gonna run it for one minute and hope that maybe we get some good luck here. This is positively yummy. So I'm just gonna run them all for one minute. So just, that was a profound thing that you did. You selected a sub menu and asked the computer to use its artificial intelligence to re-rank everything that's on your semi-basket list not everything but the ones that are most do dominant for you so now you're tightening up the bell curve towards the, the mean and it's very mathematical guys sometimes you have something over here at plus 787 for light and tyrosine and dopamine and you got a worm over here that's minus 787 so you're feeling in the dark so as you take out the minus 787 worms you feel more light in your body so that's all we're doing is we're pushing you towards the good side of light, taking out the dark areas of the body that are out of tune. How are you feeling on all that? I feel good. <clears throat> so I would remind you that all of this vo all of this music has to vibrate in a crystal prism. So you should be drinking water while you're doing magnetic and biofeedback therapies, guys. It really helps to... Uh, rectification values go up quite a bit. And the good news is I had 50% rectification on all the reds and blues for everything that is in that main um, start page. So I'm really happy with that. So and that's only with one minute, right? So if you put that timer yeah. maybe to three minutes each, you've only spent three minutes on primer, three minutes on the basics and three minutes on the progressive and now it's for 10 minutes, you've got over 50% improvement. Exactly. So now I'm going to empty everything in here because I have over 200 items and I feel like I really just went through the main system overview page pretty well. I got a pretty good rectification. So I'm gonna clear this and now we're gonna go back and um, we can look at, I want to go, well, we can look at today's stress first. So today's stress is showing immune kidneys, adrenal. I'm going to add those. Do you agree there? A great place to start is today's stress because then you're addressing the true issue of this moment in time. And I'm going to add the blues and we have liver sensitivities, degeneration, heavy metal. Um, I'm going to add the pathogens the virus, the nutritional, I'm adding everything here under 200. Um, and then I wanna look at body systems. Do we wanna look at anything before? Well, ultimately we're looking for digestion, but let's look at the general body systems. Well, I just, is here's digestion. I'm gonna add everything from digestion in here. So here's my yeah. pancreas is showing up. Folks, at least one out of every two people you see is going to come to you with digestive problems. So if you don't know where to start, cleaning out their filters is a great place to start. So, and then you can also see that large intestine and liver have, you know, are, have yeah. shown up. So then, okay. oh. And the word it. pancreas will mean blood sugar and bicarbonate acid base. So remember, every time you see the pancreas over hot or 
too cold, you're missing your acid base bicarb and your blood sugar. And that may mean that you're either pre-diabetic, but it more likely means you've got a bug in your stomach sucking up your pancreatic juices and you're not having enough left for you. So many times you're going to find that not only do you see digestive trouble on the organs, then we're going to go into digestion and pathogens in the digestive tract to see who the thief is that may be stealing her vitamins and minerals. There's always a thief that if you wake up every morning and the cash register is empty of half the till, something's stealing it at nighttime. That's usually parasites. So the next thing I'm going to do, which is a little different, um, we worked on this a little bit um, a couple of weeks ago, but I'm going to um, click on digestive. And what happens when I click on digestive from here, since there aren't any panels to go deeper, it's going to take me to entangled insights. So from here, now, if you load all insights, it gives you the options of from a larger database of different things that we can add. So since we're working today primarily on parasites, I'm gonna hit parasites all. And here it's now listed all the different types of parasites. So from here, I'm just gonna hit check, which is kind of like another analysis button. So parasites usually means amoebas or protozoas, whereas food poisoning is an umbrella term for also bacteria or amoebas and protozoas. And we can talk if you want later about what bacteria you might wanna look for as well, okay? You could also have fungal food poisoning like yeast infections, et cetera. Look at how much better it is. I only have three 100. Wow, I can hardly believe my eyes. That's amazing overnight. So listen, this is a great testimonial for this program where um, I introduced her to this panel yesterday and you know she had pages and pages of 100% areas. She worked on it. I sent her a text and said, how are you doing? And she said, yeah, it caught up with me at 4 a.m. <laughs> So you have yeah, to so let, beware, everybody. Like if you work on this, you yeah. Know, when you when you really vibrate helps. when you vibrate these organisms, they turn into water or mush. So you might expect a watery, loose stool after all of these things got vibrated and they sort of discharge themselves. Okay. Rarely do you see anything nasty in the toilet. Don't freak people out. They're already grossed out. Just say say goodbye, hasta la vista. You know, um, see you later. Be gone. Thanks for leaving. Um, should I add this one that's 1%? I think I'm going to. Yeah, anything at the very bottom might be very tricky as if your body cannot even get rid of it. It's too tired. So sometimes the most stubborn one, it's the one that's the second one down there from the bottom, like anything below, I would say even below 15%. So these are the ones that kind of linger oh, in the body. If like you want me to do 85%? I think 85% and above or 15% and below would be, the extremes of that bell curve as well, right? Now, right, if it's yeah. too many, if it's too many things, can you do the top and bottom? Or yeah, you, you have to drag these one by one. I, I think have to drag trade. these, yeah. So be selective. If you keep seeing pinworm, 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 roundworm, 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 then you may need to sort of stay on that theme there. Okay. So um, we do we do see some of these pinworm in the uh, the pancreas pit worm right there, Hymenolopus diminuta is the dwarf tapeworm of the oh, pancreas okay. that looks the size of a sesame seed. And so she had pain because my pancreas showed is red. So this is showing as a hundred. So I would definitely take any of these parasites above a score of 90, say, or 85. If you can just throw them all down on the bottom line, often it's not one bug. And that's why this is not diagnostic under a microscope with a, you know, a sample that's looking exactly for that shape of bug, but it could be the uncles and the cousins in the neighborhood. And, and bugs type tend to live in a biofilm. So the funguses provide the grass and the worms live in the grass and the, the fungus make the alcohol to feed the worms. Then the worms make you acidic and they invite the bacteria later. So it becomes a picnic of a biofilm. So don't get, don't get too hung up on any one bug. However, if you do this week after week and the same bug keeps coming up to the top, to the top, to the top, that's probably the bug that you were stuck with. And many times you'll see the bug at the bottom suddenly jump from the blue zone to the red because you finally got your immune system's attention with that bug using this technology. So it's great to be able to look at the patterns here. 
And I'll tell you, most people don't have these long-term bugs, but the sickest people do have these bugs and the medical profession is not looking for worms and parasites. They don't have the personnel in the, the laboratories to look at 400 of these different things in a sample, right? So this is where you have the advantage in the marketplace that you can give people a picture of their biofilm and a way to correct it. This is the biggest advantage. So I'm, a, I'm proud of you for the work you must have done since yesterday. <laughs> I just came, I just went into infection energetics because I just wanted to see what shows up. And lo and behold, here is parasites right. um, and virus. And I'm going to add the mold and the biofilm in here. Yeah, I would add I mean, the fungus too. I mean, so the thing is the computer has the capacity now to sort it out for you. You don't have to be the doctor to discern, should I do it or not? If you have the tiniest inclination to say, yes, 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 follow your gut instincts because the sub menus in here do reveal some things that are sub chronic or sub clinical. Say yesterday she worked on her worms. So today they're not in a red zone and they're in the green. So she thinks they're already gone, but they're still drifting down to that blue zone. If she didn't keep up with this a, a few times, at least four four sets of digestive cleansing usually gets the grandmother, the mother, the, ba the baby and the egg. So that colony is gone and that neighborhood is dismantled. I now, added all, my cerebellum in there. The cerebellum is so important. It connects to the vagus nerve and all the sensory perception. And it's really for balance and coordination. It's the thing that juggles in your brain, okay? Juggles everywhere you move. So many yeah. people with food poisoning come up with multiple sclerosis which are really antibodies from the gut attacking their cerebellum and they get clumsy and weak and they can't stand up. And it's quite reversible if you pick, it on, pick on this early. So I'm encouraging you to do this with most of your clients. Go searching in advance on every person you meet for food poisoning. Because once you, once you lower that, you lower all these other conditions. Um, I also, I went out and I came back in under on digestion from body systems. And I want to add um, the emotions that are related to everything here. So I'm just going to run a check here again. And let's see. So these are the emotions that are basically related to whatever is going wrong with my digestion, aka also parasites. So loathing, I guess I don't like them very much. <laughs> But let's go use the same. Um, okay, so here. think about this, though. You loathe the fact that your histamine is high and you don't know why. Because you didn't know you had a parasite making you have histamine. Then you're depressed because the fungus were stealing your serotonin. And then you're in horror because your adrenals are going, doesn't anybody notice there's a parasite here? Ding, ding, ding. And then you have self-pity because you don't know why you're feeling tired. And you're feeling despair, but you're also curious. I mean, what is the what is the problem here, right? So your brain is actually showing you you're trying to figure out this frustrating situation where you should be feeling energetic, but you're exhausted from some invisible force. And this is where the gut sucks the energy out of you and you think you're doing fine. But honestly, you can take a three week vacation without a wink because your guts are taking many of these um, energies out of you. So I do ask you to remember that all illness begins with the emotion and then manifests in its corresponding organ. So have you had other disappointments and horrors? And maybe it's because you don't know why your family might be acting ornery because they too have parasites, but they don't know it. They might be driving you crazy or your parents or your kids or whatever. So, you know, try not to blame others first, try to look inside and usually rage, or reward, which I is dopamine and zinc, get screwed up if parasites. So it makes certain people. Yeah, I had rage in there. I did add, just so that we keep moving things on, I added 85% um, and up and 15% and below on the emotions. Um, and now I just want to go into libraries here. Um, and did you I notice we're high eight. in sensitivities, which might indicate high histamine from parasites, not necessarily to food histamine? Um, I have um, uh, parasites with the rife numbers on it. So um, I want to look at that. And then I've also. Can I just ask, is that rem that's got the remedies in it as well then, doesn't it? I have something with remedies. Um, 
that I've added quick. Um, I have I, I have another library where I've added ivermectin in it. So here's my parasites library that's showing up at 47%. And we have a lot of things in here. So I'm just going to add all of this. So I'm going to add all the reds. You can see why having a red zone may mean that certain of these bugs all share a certain code that's similar, but they have a different set of codes as in a, co a cousin or an uncle that's slightly different. That's why many of these things overlap and not one individual reading is diagnostic, okay? But, so you know, these are all important roundworms, fluke worms, pinworms, tapeworms. They all like to suck zinc out of your adrenals and out of your ovaries and out of your brain and make you very tired for oxygen delivery. So I always tell you, you know, zinc to think, zinc keeps you pink, zinc if you stink, meaning you need a detox, zinc if you want, if you need a shrink and you're feeling off yourself like psychotic, zinc if you can't shrink the belly as if it's bloated, and zinc is enough to make you want to drink alcohol because the worms are the drinkers, not the man or the woman. And then zinc is for the power in the adrenals to skate the rink and for the erection in these winky dink. So anybody with erectile dysfunction, they don't have that zinc in the prostate. So you think about bladder worm and or prostate uh, inflammation from some other bladder infection or some other issue there. Pinworms of the rectum in men is very common with prostate issues. So I'm so, just adding 600 and above and 200 and below in here. You don't know how happy you're making me. Oh, that's such a good example. And, and you know, you're going to feel you're going to feel this because it is the true issue. Um, Look at the very top. It said parasite cleanse. Yeah, I just wanted to go to something first. Um, I have some um, good remedies in here for. I have the clove, ivermectin, zinc, castor oil, zinc again. Lithium balances zinc and copper to keep the mind straight from any rage. So I would always use lithium to help people unless they're already on high lithium. Um, Frankincense something. is a wonderful um, element for all deworming of children and all psychic attack. And 787 hertz is the dopamine that stops ADHD. Worms steal 787 from you. So I'm glad you picked that one. And it's funny because I had uh, two different variations of different milligrams and ivermectin 400 milligrams, which is the higher is the one that was. Um... That's the horse dose. <laughs> That's the one the, I need. The human dose is 15 milligrams. <laughs> That's me. Um, okay, so I think I have. And, and can I just stop for one second there? See the word GABA? When the GABA, GABA is the antihistamine of the brain, I added you, that if one. it's missing, then you know that that person's very allergic or insomniac or has a lot of worms in them. So it's one of my, if they, they, they GAB a lot, somebody on Valium gets disinhibited and they start talking, talking, talking. That's GABA, the neurotransmitter for sleep. So people who have parasites don't have GABA and they can't sleep well. The parasites are talking at the water cooler all night long, meaning your pancreas. So, um, so you're picking quite a few things on that list. Now, if somebody didn't have this library, they could just go back to vitamins and nutrition. But a lot, I like a lot of these remedies, which is a good argument to buy a couple of these extra libraries on the Rife generator. So, yes. So, um, and then I also have another which I have to find here. Um, you see how your allergies don't look bad? So why do you have histamine? It must be a worm if it's not an allergy. Histamine from worms versus histamine from bad? allergies. Well, I'm just saying your last allergy page looked all green. It's the worm page that looked blue and red. Oh, so yeah. your histamine is really coming from infectious histamine, not from allergic food allergies right. and pollen and dust. Okay. Um, I have this library um, for the GI microbial testing panel. Now there's 
all these are different panels and I imported it twice in error. So there are some things that are doubled, which is interesting because normal bacterial floral is showing red here and it's not here, but. Um, Every time you test something, it already cures it, don't you know? That's the quantum field. Just by asking the question, you already invoke the response of the brain. So testing something twice gives a second reading a different answer. So um, I would go after that H. pylori like a vengeance. So I'm going to add it this way, and I'm also going to click on it. So these are different. Um, maybe you could explain this because I don't understand this part at all, if necessary, but I'm just going to add the red tier. Well, it looks like somebody has made up some some other elements uh, that are related to it. You know, virus A or virus B panel. I'm not quite sure who made that panel. This, so I think this comes exactly from like when you do stool testing. This is what they're testing. For. I see. So and what about potential autoimmune triggers? Does it say food poisoning or does it say parasites? Citrobacter and Klebsiella bacteria in the bladder, possibly or gut. So I would take those into there. Those th those little blue blue babies. All right, and then. Um, intestinal health digestion. What does that say near the bottom? Yeah, that one. Oh, this is, I know if you have gluten issues. Yeah. If your yeast dissolves all the glue or the grout between the, you know, the bath stones, that's the, the zonulin is disintegrating. Then we got leaky gut. Then, then we got big trouble in River City with a capital T. So it rhymes um, with. So this looks some substantially better. Just look on the worm panel for me, just right there. Just want to show people what worms might look like. It just has the five top worms that they have the laboratory test for in the hospital. So Ascaris roundworm of the duodenum, Tinea tapirum of the pancreas, Trichuris means trich means hair. So this is the whipworm of the hair or the lungs or the pancreas for diabetes. The nectar americanus is pinworm of the duodenum or rectum in pile or hemorrhoids or constipation everywhere. And the ancylostoma duodenale is the ancylostoma is the hookworm with a little sucker on it that comes from dogs licking your nose, usually walking barefoot on a beach, somebody picking up. So these are the five most common. And as you saw, when she went to her rife generator, she had, you know, all kinds of other things with amoebas and other things. So don't just think parasites is going to do them all. It, you have to look for worms as a different family. Yeast is a different family. Bacteria is a different family. And parasites is a different family. So, you know, if you check those four corners of the bioterrain graph, you're probably going to catch most of what's going on. And most of these things, can I mention one last thing, which I just learned? It's Lyme disease month in May. Mm -hmm. Lyme disease lays their eggs in the worm. And that worm becomes the incubator for Lyme disease. So you're going to notice when you keep going after somebody with Lyme disease, they never get better because you didn't take care of the worm incubator and the Lyme just came back and came back and came back. So do the Lyme disease and the worm together and you break people out of these 10 year exhaustive low zinc states where they can't get out of bed. I've had hundreds of people tell me they've got out of bed after years in it. So go ahead and you can go back and get on track there. Okay. Now, God bless you after we leave this session that you put the play button on and go and uh, enjoy a cup of tea somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's all. I mean, you, I think that we have enough in here. I'd say so. So um, the only other thing that we could do is we can do. Um, if you're going to race around the track, you need a carburetor in your brake. So a thyroid and an adrenal support in order to handle this re-triggering is, is also wise, I would so say. So you want me to add in? Um... Glands, adrenal, yeah. Just give yourself a little bit of thyroid and adrenal support. Or even if they're very infected, you could add thymus support as well. Now, most people don't get why people are depressed. The gallbladder is connected to the hypothalamus. So if you have an infected gallbladder with salmonella or food poisoning, you're going to have a suppressed hypothalamus and be sad or rigid or guilty or shameful or ruminating or OCD. The hypothalamus is your manufacturing plant for happy mood. So if your gallbladder is unhappy, your hypothalamus will be unhappy. 
And there's a very strong reflex there to stop people from overeating. Where the parasites want to eat and they make your gallbladder, hey, give me some juice. And the brain says, you know, disconnects from, from their normal eating pattern and starts eating like a parasite, which means so, every 20 minutes wanting sugar. Okay, you so loathing comes up on top, but I want to find, we have some emotions there. I want to find, oh, digestion, because yeah. I want to go into the um, functional zone now. That's great. Tell people about functional zones. They're the emotional underpinnings of the organ or system, right? Well, yeah. So there's all these different zones that um, can be affected by the um, all these different functional zones. Sorry, I just had a like. So um, can you go into tissue regulation and see if there's yep. any deeper thing to see on that? And I would say it's always important to go in, even though it may not be red or blue here, because look at um, we, organic vegetative stress evaluation is at 98%. That means that it's not in your head. You've got something truly going on in your stomach. So... Um, and, we can and, add and when you see the word tumor, it means a swollen lymph node somewhere near an infection, okay? So it doesn't mean they have a tumor and they have cancer, but it means a gland is swelling in response to antibodies production from a lymph node from a signal of an infection somewhere. So be aggressive on pathogens is the, is the word for today because the pathogens are stealing the minerals. Now, if you just keep pumping the minerals in, you're feeding the pathogens too. You gotta, you gotta take out the crabgrass and put nice putting green lawn in there. The probiotics, okay. So here we have 99 on acquired interference stress evaluation and toxic substance interference stress evaluation is 98%. So I'm just going to go through these and um, add them and then we will run uh, the main poultry. So just to recap, she primed you, she primed herself. Then she looked at the body's priorities versus biofield priorities and put in a, a vessel to hold the new energies. She created that cup we talk about. And then she started looking into the cup to see what the sub problems were. Then she looked at the problems beneath the sub problems with the pathogens and the organ systems. Then she looked beneath that into the remedies and to the emotions to see if she could untangle the roots of it. So you see how deep she's gone down that rabbit hole today. And now she's chopping off the chances of it coming back because she took out all the component parts of it. So that's how you dissect somebody with a gut problem, which is, as I say, one in every two people you meet is going to have this scenario. And if they don't, they're miraculous. Oh, wow, 100% ATP phosphate stress evaluation. So what is ATP made of is zinc and vitamin B and C in the adrenals, right? Or in the thymus or in the thyroid. So you're starving for B vitamins when you can't make ATP, right? The Krebs cycle uses B vitamins to use oxygen burning into two, you know, turning glucose and burning it into fuel. So a pancreas would be low in blood sugar or a parasite in the pancreas could be stealing your energy and your ATP for its colony's energy. And that's why doctors don't wait that they don't go into the in preventative medicine early enough and they wait till that tumor is in the head of the pancreas blocking it with a lymph node or an H. pylori gastritis turning into a gastric lymphoma. And these are all preventable and, and can be wound back down as I have done many times. <clears throat> so no cancer is a death sentence to anybody whatsoever. Don't even shy away from the word. Don't even use the word. Just say the word degeneration. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just move a little quickly because we're already at 257. I've added these organ change stress evaluation and autoimmune stress evaluation from immune zone yeah. and now microorganism zone. Should be interesting. So just to remind them, you went into functional zone considerations under microbiology, is that right? Uh <coughs> I did digestion. Oh, digestion. Okay. Digestion and Lyme stress evaluation and fungus stress evaluation, 199%. So. so as the worms moved out of the train station, the next car needs to come in and you're going to, you're going to keep moving things in and out like that.
So I'm so going to run begin analysis now. So and this is a great a demonstration of your of your capacity for analysis here. So and now I'm going to run everything for one minute. And actually, what I found last night when I was running this, um, I was actually I was getting great rectification numbers, but when I ran just the highs on one, I got a, a low, like in the teens rectification. And what I did then was I went back to the quick app and I ran all the minerals and the bio field that we had put in. I ran that for a minute. And when I ran it again, every, all the numbers came back up again. So that's fantastic. Great, great strategy there. Just thinking you, you may need another IV bag halfway through an operation. Exactly. I was, a virtual IV bag of love and goodness. Yes, Linda, this will be recorded. It'll be on YouTube. So let's just wrap up by saying that everybody's got parasites, okay? There are 10 times more of those bugs than us. But if they dominate you, then they could make acidosis or make low oxygen and steal your nutrients. So it's wise to keep the probiotics high and keep that under control as much as you can, whether you're at a buffet or on a beach. And so here's, here's your improvements so, are how high now. So I only had 11% rectification. So let's run my theory that I just mentioned from before. So now I'm going to run the quick zap, which has all the, the minerals and everything that I ran before. Let's run that for a minute and we'll run the, um, then the progressive insights. And again, after that and see if, that are, helps. are you feeling thirsty or dry? I am. Yeah. So the name of your YouTube channel is Genius Live. And I'm doing live theory so that if you want to tune in on Tuesdays, I talk about all the science behind some of these concepts. And Denise is giving us some great demos on Thursdays to say, how do we apply the theory and let's put it into practice. So you're welcome to join me one o'clock on Tuesdays um, in the, in the uh, mighty networks or get on our list. If you're not on our list and get to support at Insight Health Apps and get on our mighty networks list so you can get in train, get training as you're going. And we're going to try to um, work on the gut for a couple of weeks because we really focused on parasites today, but there are all different um, worms and I would invite you to come back and volunteer next week and let me show you about bacterial food poisoning, like the salmonella, you know, the campylobacter, the food poisonings of the bacterial family are very, very common and important. So, so let's, ta let let's tackle that next week, okay? I'm, I'm going to run all of this again. I just rescanned it and you see there's still a lot of parasites in there showing up on top. But I did get a 34% rectification when running the minerals. So hopefully that will be enough to help. So folks, see this one down here, Ascaris lumbricoides is the classic round worm of the, the, the worm on the soil that comes out of the kids' noses as the big stuffy nose. It's the constipating one is the one that causes tight neck muscles, duodenal ulcers. It also causes low zinc and dopamine in the frontal brain. So almost every kid I see who has ADHD with low dopamine has that worm in their nose or sinus or in their gut. And you can't believe how improved they are after a month of deworming and or maybe two or three moon cycles if they're very severe. And if they're severe, severe, they can even act like autism and deworming them. They get all the poisons out of their constipated gut, their lymph nodes come down, their mood comes up, their neck muscles get less spastic and torticollis, and you're gonna find a much happier uh, a child who can learn much better. So I wanted you to be aware that these are very often missed. And the easiest way to find it is white fingernails. Everybody check your fingernails. If there's any white zinc deficient lines there, I want you to start looking for your crabgrass down below. <laughs> so that went up. So then the next thing I would do here is I would just run, we don't have time to run the highs for three minutes, but I'll run the high for one minute and then we'll go look and see what the aura looks like. Okay. Now folks, if you can't get good rectifications, you're missing enzymes that cause these reactions to occur 
So if you're really sluggish and you're getting 10% rectifications, 20 maybe, go back and give enzymes and minerals to give yourself more juice before you start. If you're still stuck, look for heavy metals. Heavy metals block everything from moving anywhere. And sometimes we have to stop going after the bugs and take the metals out so the bugs don't live in that oxidized environment anymore. So if you're really stuck and things aren't moving forward, as she, if you look on her scan, she's now coming back up to heavy metals near the top of her list right now. So as we explode the yeast, we release the lead that was inside the yeast. So there may be a flush upwards in heavy metals after the yeast is dying, because now the yeast is not sequestering that metal anymore. So you have to be very careful that once you start exploding bugs, the metals start rising out of sequestration. So beware of that and just get on the kidneys, the liver, the vitamin C, you know, some of the things that support. So I have 57% on the highs, so I'm happy with that. So now let's just go back and see, maybe my aura looks a little bit better and then it looks like it's gonna be a wrap for today. Although I'm gonna still keep running these for me. That's a great way to fix the aura at the end and see. And I think that using the aura at the beginning and the end and not so many times in between will allow more time for jello to swirl around. And then at the end, you can close it off. Once you've closed off the aura at the end, you know, um, yeah. So well, now I don't love that, but you're in the okay, middle of so a wash. If this, just, if this is me, what, what I normally do. So I'm just going to be consistent here, guys, is I go into libraries and I'm just gonna run the um, the gemstones, and I'm just gonna run that on a quick balance for one Very minute. Very good. Another form of minerals, right? Mm -hmm. Ah. And it might be that you get more gray because we put 200 items on the washboards. So if you're very wanting to be a bit more methodical, you can go through certain elements one week, two week, three week, now change direction, four or five, six. You know, you guys are going to be using this over time. You don't have to, you don't have to reverse the body through 40 or 50 years of trauma and, and poisons in one afternoon. That's a bit ambitious. And believe me, I've tried. <laughs> so take your time and let the body heal at the speed with which it can absorb and deliver these, um, these corrections, okay? And I and would recommend also that, that when you are doing this, please make sure you're drinking a lot of water to flush all of this out. You, have, you need to stay hydrated. Because otherwise it's gonna move and it just get stuck. Yeah. So we had 26%, which is okay. Not great, but let's just see. And then we're gonna wrap it up. And it is what it is at this point for everybody, guys. Which just goes to show you that it takes a lot of, a lot of adjusting in an hour to be a coach to get all these fine tunings. So don't be afraid to use the panels that say all, let the computer do the sorting gather clumps of information there you go much changed so that looks much better i'm happy with that we have yeah. some healing green yeah. my heart's in there um oh and irene is asking how long would you be running these frequencies for i ran the frequencies for the parasites for quite some time last night um as dr debbie was explaining there's a 17 minute cycle for them your Never. lymph, your lymph goes around the body every 17 minutes. So I, and it goes around the heart every seven minutes. So if it's a blood infection, make sure you go in multiples of seven, but if it's a lymphatic, you want to clean the whole body, use 17 minutes or 34 or 50, whatever it would be, uh, 50 ish. Okay. And after about 90 minutes, your body is 99% saturated. Spending another hour is not going to be able to saturate you more than 1% extra. So save it, turn the device off, go do something else and let 20 minutes pass so that your lymph cells can catch up with all the debris they're trying to eat up before you come and stir the pot again. So after about 90 minutes, take a break, okay? So that's all, that's all we have for today, guys. That's a wrap on this Thursday Live. Dr. Debbie Drake, thank you so much. 
um, for joining in and helping and assisting in explaining a lot of that about the parasites for us all. And everybody tune in on Tuesday for Dr. Debbie Drake's um, live on theory. And we're gonna keep kind of coordinating um, my demos here with what she's doing so we can kind of reinforce everything that, um, that we're doing. So I hope you all enjoy that. Have a great day. Um, if you're in the States, have a great uh, Memorial Day weekend, everyone, and look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.